how to find a great restaurant when you're traveling. Okay, here's what you do. I don't want to make reservations. I want to go where the locals eat, and I always find places where locals go. Now, here's what you do. You don't want to go to places, for example, Europe. Don't go to places that have the menu in English. You're going to get overcharged and the food's not going to be as good. I never go to those places. Um, learn a few words of Italian or French so that you can decipher the menu, but whatever you pick is going to be good. Trust me. Um, so, okay, so here's what you do. Walk around where you're staying and don't just go to the very um, touristy locations with people out front trying to get you to come inside. Those are never good. Don't even bother going. They shouldn't have to have somebody outside trying to get you inside. No. So don't go there. Um, and don't go, like I said, about the menu. So walk around where you're staying and look for smaller places where people who are obviously locals are eating. Mostly in Europe, there's a lot of places where you can sit outside. In fact, most places you can sit outside, even in the winter. So those people are out there smoking and drinking and having a great time laughing. Um, so pay attention to those. And then if you want to see if that place is going to be, if you want to run it through Google reviews, you can do that. But I ask local people where they eat and I always get good recommendations or I just based on seeing what I'm seeing like in Sicily and Chefalu, um I was shopping in the more local area for my groceries going to the bakery patisserie fruit and I noticed that all all the people inside this certain restaurant were locals that were workers and the prices for pasta and all the meals were under $12 and less. Okay, so, um, so you want to go to that place. And then the other exploration you can do, like in Sorrento, Italy, um, during the winter. This is during the winter when a lot of places are closed. I found this wonderful local place. Not very many tables and they were open between 5 30 when most tourists want to eat. Honestly a lot of people don't eat after 8. So um, <laughs> when you're traveling because you get up early and you go to bed early. At least a lot of people I know myself included. Um, and it was run by the owner and his wife and ex-wife. And they were wonderful. They had me try things for free and chatted with me and didn't mind I was murdering their wonderful Italian language. Um, so mainly I focused on Italy, but you can do this in France. You can do this... Uh, in Asia, all you have to do is look and see who's going in the places. It might be some tiny little place that everybody's lined up for in Thailand. It might be a street vendor that the people who live there are going to. It's pretty easy to get good food in Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, just by noticing where people are going. You don't have to read reviews even. But if that's your goal to have good food, just forget making reservations. You're going to spend too much money. You're going to go. I mean, if you want to do that, go ahead. But I think it's a lot more fun to find these local places of exceptional food. And this applies to not only restaurants, but patisseries, bakeries, fruit places. Um, you know, amazingly... Uh, in Sheffalu, I found the best Rosa red oranges. Their oranges are the best in the world in Sicily um, at the Conad, which is a big corporate chain. <laughs> Honestly, I was completely shocked. But then all the produce, even in the winter, is exceptional in Sicily. So um, those are my tips. Comment below if you have a question, if you're going on a trip. 
And by the way, my Oaxaca City trip is on for September. Join us. Um, we're, we have a lot of fun there. We go to Monte Alban. We take pictures. We eat. It's a foodie town. And I've been there several times. I lived there two months in the pandemic and discovered it. So, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.